This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, we're virtually going to school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if that's what they did on uh, on the Star Trek Enterprise. Uh, maybe if they were listening to Metallica on a Monday. Well, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that's something you have to vote for. And uh, I mean, I don't, where do you even find voting information nowadays? Uh, probably not on BuzzFeed. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 259 for Thursday, the 8th of October, 2020. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. We had Cosmopolitans during our pre-show. Kent, what would you think about yours? Uh, not not bad. I wish there wasn't cranberry in it, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's Cosmopolitan. I, I thought it was all right. Um, I'll, I'll give it one thumb up. Like, I could drink this. Um, sure, sure. I'm I'm not going to turn down a free one, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, who turned down who turns down free alcohol, right? I mean, really depends on the situation, but Um, <laughs> hey dude, uh it's uh so today is Thursday, the 8th of October. The vice presidential debate was last night. Yep. And I want to know, did you switch who you're voting for cuz I believe before you were going to vote for a candidate I'm leaning towards voting towards the, for the fly. The fly, yes, um, yeah, the fly won the debate, obviously. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to make any clever jokes that haven't already been made on Twitter and everywhere, yeah. everywhere else. Um, but yeah, that was that was, um, yep, that was a thing that happened. Um, <laughs> yeah, debates for me, they don't really, they don't really help me at all with choosing who I'm going to vote for. I, I mean, come on, who, who does that actually help? I, I will uh, tell you, everybody knows who they're going to vote for, for, for president and vice president. I will tell you that it has in the past helped me decide who I'm not going to vote for. The fly, right? No, no, I'm totally voting for the fly this time. <laughs> <Right>. um, <laughs> I think it's a little late for the fly to get on the ballot. That's the, uh, that's the only problem. Right ins. That's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. Everybody said right in, um, yeah. in the the live studio audience, and uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. But the crazy thing is, I already know who's on my ballot. Even the quote right in uh, uh, candidates, right? Um, so I go to this this website every two years. I go to this website called Ballotpedia where I get to learn about all of the candidates that are running in, in the, the races that I get to vote for. I get to read the ballot measures. Uh, so like all of the like constitution uh, proposals, like state constitution proposals, all of the uh, you know, local ordinance measures, things like that that end up on the ballot. Um, I want to share this link. I'm going to share it in the Twitch chat right now. And it's going to be in our show notes. Uh, Ballotpedia has a thing called sample ballot lookup where the initial thing is you get your official sample ballot for your voting district. So you get to actually see who's going to be on the ballot. So it's kind of like your, uh, your study material, right? Uh, your practice test, if you will, for when you actually go to vote on November 3rd, or hopefully you, you actually vote ahead of time, do some early voting. Um, but the really, really cool thing is when you look up your your sample ballot, you can actually click a link to all of your candidates, all of your ballot measures, and you get to read not not a partisan biography or something like that. It is a it is a a full description of everything that they stand for, everything that they've voted for, like their their um, their voting histories. Uh, you get to read like for the ballot measures, for example, you get to read. Arguments for, arguments against. Um, it's a very comprehensive uh, look at everything that's on your ballot. So I use that every two years before I go vote uh, to to really study up, and I print out my sample ballot so that I mark my choices. You know, as I'm learning about them, I figure out which candidates I'm going to vote for. I understand a lot of people they're either going to vote straight Democrat ticket or straight uh, Republican ticket or whatever. 
vote for who you, who you want to, right? But if you really want to know who's on your ballot, what they actually stand for and vote on merit, this is the site for you. And I highly encourage people to check this out. Like, you know what, Trump and Biden, whatever, you guys know who you're voting for with that. And your vote only, I mean, how much does your individual vote actually count for the presidential uh, choice? I mean, we can debate that till the cows come home, right? right. But the down ballot things are where your voice actually matters, right? So your, your local district uh, candidates are the ones where you can actually make a, a very, very significant difference, especially if you learn who those candidates are early, you know what they stand for, and then you, I hesitate to use the word proselytize on their behalf, but just talk to your neighbors and your friends and people that are in your district and explain to them why you're voting for that candidate. Like, well, they, you know, they, they're the one that's voting for more, more money for the schools, and this other candidate thinks that schools are useless. You know what I mean? Things like mm -hmm. that, right? Um, that you can actually make a very, very significant difference in your in your local communities by understanding who your candidates are. Um, and uh, yeah, check it out, Ballotpedia. I love this. I've been showing. Uh, I've been trying not to dox myself as I sh as I share this screen. Um, <laughs> for for example, Don Young. He's my current rep representative here in Alaska. He's the only representative we have, and he's a piece of shit. Um, and Elise Galvin, nonpartisan, but she's actually aligns with liberal Democrats, according to all the ads I hear all the time. Oh, sure. So sure, sure. It, it's nice to go in here and you can actually see all the different people and they're not, I mean, the, the incumbent is on top, but for like our Senate seat, Daniel S. Sullivan, who's another piece of shit, by the way, um, he's the incumbent. Al Gross is the leading person, like his leading competitor. They're, they're roughly split 55 45 right now but he's in second in in, in in the polls but he's fourth on this list so it's not even like doing that kind of stuff you know it's it's kind of keeping it keeping it legit yeah. i like it yeah it's a it's a great resource i like that a lot i might share that with more people than just you <laughs> it's fantastic so so tell me about uh virtual school man Dude, been doing this virtual school stuff, man. And they have a on the kids have an online component and a paper component. And the paper mm -hmm. component is very confusing because you don't understand what the instructions are unless you happen to have done the online component immediately prior, and it matches up. But if even if you did it like yesterday, you'll forget the sub the the subtext of what is needed to be done on the paper stuff. So I just started skipping the paper stuff. Now I found out that my school doesn't even grade the paper stuff; they only grade the computer stuff. You can use, so I just use I, I basically have five thousand sheets of paper stuff printed out that are just going to collect dust because I'm not going to use it anymore. And the computer stuff is dead simple. All the kids are getting it, and they're like, "Oh, if your child is having a problem, use the paper stuff." My kid, mm. and I realized this week that our curriculum up here in Alaska for our dig, our virtual school is actually based on the the Florida online learning pro program. So my question to you, Kent. In 15 years, are we going to have a battle between the Florida man and Alaska man stories? <laughs> oh, man. I would love that, actually. Like, let's get some some variety in my crazy news uh, quizzes when they when they come up. Right. Like everything is Florida man, Florida man, Florida man. Yeah. If we can get Alaska man. Right. Like, I'm, I'm down, man. Let's Just for do the it. variety. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah so, but so, yeah, big voice. Jay says depends on your sunshine laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously the reason that, that, that Florida man pops up all the time is because of the, the open source nature of, of court records in Florida. Like everything has to be published. If you get in trouble for something, it has to be made public. Yep. And that's why we constantly get stories new Florida man, uh, fucked an alligator or, or whatever. I I mean there are I I was in Indiana for several years and never heard any about anybody fucking alligators. <laughs> so, like, I think there's a lot of reasons for that. <laughs> I don't think all of them had to do with the sunshine laws. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um uh, so before the show about an hour before we went live for the for our pre-show uh, I opened up our show notes and I saw that you had posted something in here and it had a link and I clicked on it and damn you, because I got lost for about 45 minutes. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about 
Metallica Mondays. When COVID hit, Lars Ulrich started hosting these things on YouTube called Metallica Mondays. It hasn't been every Monday, and I don't even know if it's still going on anymore, but it opened me up to this archive. And what they were doing is every Monday, Lars would come on. Of course, it's Lars, right? Because he's the only one with the mouth that won't stop running. Yep, yep, yep. Um, he would go on there and explain a little bit about a, a concert, and then they would show that entire concert. Now, through my ample viewing i have noticed that some concerts don't start on time like the recordings start halfway through the show sometimes it's a, a high eight camera from somebody on stage sometimes it's a full production crew sometimes it's the house cameras um but it, it, it's it's a show and if you like metallica if you like their live presence and things like that you'll notice that every show is very similar but every show is different like there's always something different going on well once you get past the Metallica Mondays and you've seen all those, not that I have. <laughs> right, not, right, right. Not, not that I haven't. Um, there is an absolute treasure trove of live performances freely available for you to go watch Metallica live on stage for mm. the last 40 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I used to get in my email from like a million years ago when I signed up for the Metallica fan club. Mm -hmm. um, I used to get emails like every week with uh, links to download full like full live album MP3s like every week from yep. a, a different show in a different city. And um, it was I thought it was cool as hell at first, but then it just became rapidly overwhelming. <laughs> Yeah, just the amount of material that's out there. Now, the the greatest part about this, in my opinion, is if you were at a show on a specific night and you know when that show was, yep. there is a chance that the show you were at is on YouTube and you can go watch it again. Yep. Because yeah, absolutely. That's just in fact. Awesome. So the the show that I saw way back in 1997, in uh, one of the at least one of the tracks or a, you know a segment of, of tracks or whatever uh, made its way onto the live shit binge and purge uh th th project that they did like uh, years ago or whatever cunning stunts oh or that's what yeah i'm sorry yeah binge and purge was the the much earlier one that was <laughs> the um uh injustice for all tour and all that yeah um yeah yeah you're right cunning stunts was the that's right that's the one that it, I was at the uh, Rosemont, Illinois show. Right. Um, yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. Super awesome. Um, which, by the way, to clarify something that you'd said earlier, uh, I watched the most recent Metallica Monday, and Lars spoke for like 15 minutes before the, the thing actually started. And he said that that was the last Metallica Monday. Oh, we'll see. Yeah. I, I, it so, just proves that I haven't seen them all. Yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Like, <laughs> I was like, when I clicked on it, I was like, of course Lars is the one introducing this, and of course he spoke for 15 minutes because this man just. It, but for someone who's not a vocalist uh, during the uh, the performances, like this man, he does not have, know how to stop moving his mouth. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's Lars. So if you're into Metallica, hop onto YouTube and just find them, man. Just look at the Metallica channel, and there's so much. To, it, you, you can be in one of those moods, like, it's like, I don't need to deal with any of this shit right now. In fact, that's what I watched last night after I watched the uh, the debates. I sat here and watched two full concerts from Dallas, one of which was, happened oh. on Jane's birthday. And they came out, and they surprised me with a bunch of uh, whipped cream cake, you know, whipped cream cakes and stuff. Yeah. Or whip, yeah, whip yeah, cream yeah. pies. Um, yeah, so if you need it's to get your mind away from shit, and you just need to relax in the solitude or the sanctity, or the satisfaction, <laughs> or whatever other all alliteration I can find with S, um, and just get away from it all for about an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Some some shows are like two hours and thirty minutes. Like there's some long yep. ones. Um, go watch some Metallica live in concert, man. You won't like that's not time you'll want back. Uh, that's time that you will, <laughs> you will have enjoyed spending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's easy for us to say that because we're we're both like. Pretty much Metallica super fans. Oh, uh, you know what? That's actually something that caught me into this was watching people's reaction to the one video. I've been super into, uh, uh, like, like rap fan uh, listens to Metallica or whatever, like that kind of stuff. And there's not a whole lot of metal people listening to hip hop, but there's a lot of 
people that are into hip hop and rap and and R and B trying out like metal, and mm, mm. Y- you know Megadeth are like, oh, it's so fast. Okay, there's a lot of energy, and then then they get to like Metallica, and it's just like, where do these where do these rhythms come from? And it's it, yeah. It's, <laughs> A, a, a random adults react to shit. Now, also watching a lot of um, a lot of people react to George Carlin blows me. Like Christians oh. reacting to George Carlin, you want to you want to see some good times, man. You want to make some watch some people not understand what the hell their life is about. Go watch, <laughs> go watch some Christians react videos to George Carlin. Oh my god, that's okay. Yep, I'm gonna have to check that out. That's uh, wow. This episode of the Rich Ones Re Podcast has been brought to you by all the random shit Amos finds on YouTube. <laughs> so something that I didn't find on YouTube, but I did find as a streaming video. Uh, this week I watched Star Trek Picard. Hmm. Uh, I liked it. Yeah. A lot. A lot. Did you watch Star Trek The Next Generation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course I did. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Didn't. Um, but I bet you haven't watched Picard yet. No, I so, didn't realize it was out yet. Yeah, it's a, yeah. The the entire first season is done. Um, it's all out there. Um, I is this, I is this all on CBS All Access? It is. Yeah, uh, there's there's other places that you can get it. Yeah, I'll have to find those other places. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I yeah, so I watched the entire thing this week. Um, in fact, I think I watched it all in three days. Uh, it's ten episodes. Uh, man, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, to me, so for, there was a lot of, there was a lot of nostalgia beats, which you could expect, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, because there was some, some uh, guest stars from the next generation that show up, of course, right? Uh, because the characters still exist, (laughs) you know? So, uh, there were some appearances, but it wasn't overly done. I don't think as far as like the, you know, fan service type stuff. Um, the, the, the biggest takeaway for me is that it was really sweet. Like there were, there were several moments during the show where my eyes actually welled up. Uh, so some very, some very, um, like poignant moments. Um, now is this called bad moments? Is this called Picard because Jean-Luc Picard is the primary character? Is it because, yeah. uh, because, uh, uh, they just needed to call it Picard because they, it would draw in fans. Like, like how how disingenuous or not is the name Star Trek? Oh Picard? no 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 no! It's it's uh, Jean Luc Picard is the main character. Okay. He is the primary protagonist. Did yeah. you, you know and, sometimes uh, sometimes they'll name some shit and it'd be like, yeah, they kind of mentioned that once, but that's not what it was about. Yeah no 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 no! It's very much uh, a post retirement Picard um, finding a reason to. Uh, get, like get back into the mix, right? Like to, to go on another adventure. Gotcha. And um, it was it was really really good in my opinion. Um, and in a lot of the new characters that were introduced. So you you like Firefly? In fact, you were the person that introduced Firefly to me many many years ago. Um, As you were telling me, stop texting on your phone while you're driving. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Um, but so the crew of the ship that, that Picard like puts together basically, uh, reminds me a little bit of Firefly, or at least the dynamic of, uh, it's kind of like a motley crew just thrown together and everybody brings something and there's a little bit of drama, but everybody has a skill and mm-hmm. all these things. Um, I really, really enjoyed that di- dynamic and I really enjoyed, especially a couple of the characters, uh, Captain Rios and uh, Rafi, who was actually a, a, an old Starfleet buddy of, um, of Picard's, um, she and uh, the captain, um, I can't, oh, Chris, his name was Chris Rios, I think. Um, the, di- the dynamic between those two characters and just what they bring to it, um, I enjoyed, like, as much as I enjoyed the nostalgia and the sweet bits and whatnot, the dynamic of that crew is like that's what's going to bring me back for sec for the second season. Yeah, gotcha. Hopefully they make a second season, which I think they're I think they're scheduled to do, and I really hope they do. And I really hope it's the same crew because um, man, I so I'm just going to go ahead and say two thumbs up, highest recommendation from me. If 
you like Star Trek. Got to. No, that sounds sounds legit. Um, if people want to see more of you throwing thumbs, where should <laughs> they go? <laughs> well, um, I'm sure if you went to patreon.com slash ritual misery, there's footage of me throwing thumbs. There might Some... be. There might be. Patreon.com slash ritual misery. Uh, you can go there and find out all the little Metallica secrets we have uh, mm-hmm. in the past and uh, and see if there's any videos of us pretending to be Metallica, pretending to be in South Carolina. <laughs> Yeah, Metallica pretending to be in South Carolina is what we were pretending to be. Yes. Right. So just because we were actually in South Carolina. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Um, But yeah, pre shows, post shows, exclusive interviews, all kinds of things in the treasure box. Is that what it's called? The treasure box, right? Treasure box trove. Treasure chest trove. Sure. Box chest thing. It's it's on patreon.com slash (laughs) virtual. (laughs) um yeah so check it out if you if you sign up now um your contributions from now until the end of COVID 19 all of your contributions are going to charity we are not going to put that in our in our own piggy banks Yep. uh it's all going to go towards extra life um and we've already raised i think the first month we raised because we just crossed over the month last week or whatever and, and we we got like 40 something dollars out of it uh yeah. i don't know it's it's all confusing <laughs> um but yeah so uh yeah so get over there um check it out a, a buck a month will you'll will earn you not only our undying gratitude but also access to all the things we talked about before and you know that your money is going to help kids yep and uh if kent ever opens up his weekends and allows us to record them uh Special episodes just for patrons that have nothing to do with the show, no show notes involved, just two dudes talking about life. So yeah, if you yeah, want yeah. more of that, guilt trip him at RM underscore Del Norte. Yes, Twitter. yes. What he said. RM underscore Del Norte. That's yep. right. <laughs> All right, dude. Uh, it's about time for one of these, isn't it? He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Games. Games. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. I don't know why it's so quiet. Yeah, so I don't know if uh, I don't know if we're gonna actually do this as a game. Um, I didn't come up with a way to gamify this, but we could do we could do a an RNG like we did last time. Okay. Do you want to do that? Okay. Sure. So, all right. So what we've got? Yeah, actually, go ahead and set up what the. Uh, what the conceit of this is. Okay. So I found, I, I, I love Buzzfeed articles. I know you're not supposed to open them. They're not, spo- they're, they're, they're trash. I, as long as they load fine, I love like any of those stupid list shits of some random editor. Somewhere uh, that needed to come listicles. Up with yes. He needed to come up. He or she, I guess this is Dave Stopera. So this is a, he I'm guessing, um, they needed to come up with something today because deadline was yesterday and it's got to be done now. Uh, I don't care. I love them and I, I will open almost all of them that I see <laughs> in my Apple News. That, that's a guilty pleasure of mine as well. Yeah. Um, because one of the things that I do is I'm as I'm falling asleep or getting ready to fall asleep um, is I will go through Apple News and just start you know reading through articles or whatever. And one of the things that I most consistently click on are the BuzzFeed listicles. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Um, so this is how we're going to do it, Kent. Um, we're going to go down this list, and between you, me, is Steph still there? Um, Sounds like she stepped out. Okay, so between yeah. you and I and chat, whoever wants to, to do it, uh, we're going to compete on who will admit to more of these applying directly uh, to them. Okay, okay. Because that, that, right. that leans directly into the conceit, because the conceit of this article is – 23 things literally uh, every single person has done but has never admitted to. Okay. So what are we – are we just going to um, say whether or not we've done it or are we going to also explain uh, – I think we should, I think we should tell stories about it. Yes, yes. We're going to have – you have to give a convincing article, uh, a convincing, convincing uh, a, a, a story to go I, along with it. Otherwise, it's okay. just bogus. 
Oh, I see. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> So we're going to go down through here. Uh, and this again is 20. It's actually all the wording is all fucked up. 20, 23 things literally single person has done, but has never admitted. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So with the, when I, when I pasted the title into the show doc, I actually, I fixed it. I added the every. Yeah. Uh, literally every person has done. And, and yeah. if you look at like buzzfeed.com, it's buzzfeed.com slash Dave's four slash common dash experiences dash we dash share. Like yeah, you, yeah, that was his original title. Then he had to make it all clickbaity. <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay. So, are are we going to randomly go through these, or did you want to do them in order? Uh, let's just do them in order. Okay, because that that works fine for me. Uh, because I I read like two or three of these, right. and then I was like, okay, no, this will work, and then I closed it. So. Well, well, I literally read all of them before I sent them to you. So. <laughs> okay. Got it. Uh... All right. Um, number one, uh, I will start because I'm already the one talking. The out of body experience, and this is listed as having the me forgetting that I exist while I'm driving. <laughs> Kent, has this happened to you? Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's it's interesting. This worded that I forgot to that I exist. Um, but yeah, I've definitely, I've definitely, I, I always thought about it as time traveling. Like if I'm driving home from work and let's say it's a 20 minute drive, but I feel like it only took me three minutes to get home because that's all I remember of the drive. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a scary thing. I, I don't know how I got from, from there to here. Uh, that's definitely happened to me. And in fact, th like where, where I guess the same type of behavior exhibits itself is if I'm, if, the, if I've got somebody in my passenger seat and we're having a conversation and I know where my exit is because I, that's my exit home. That's, that's where I get off to go. That's where I get off the highway to go home. I will drive right the fuck past that exit because I'm in the conversation and I'm not paying attention to what's happening on the road. Um, so I imagine that this a similar thing happens like in my thoughts like, I will just be kind of, uh, you know, thinking about uh, what I'm going to do next week on RMP. And then suddenly I'm at the house. Like, yeah. how did I get here? What about you, man? Um, so I was going to say that this is, I mean, I drive a lot. Like, I've always been one to drive a lot. Kent hates driving because, like, he's like, I'd rather fly. I enjoy the drive. There have been times, however, where I get somewhere and I'm listening to podcasts and I don't remember like, I'm like, oh shit, I just listened to five episodes. I don't remember that. Okay. So I'll go back and listen <laughs> and I'll recognize the episode. Like, okay, yeah, I did. I did listen. Okay. All right. I guess it was five episodes. You know, I just kind of like just in the uh, zone. Mm. There are certain drives, a certain 12 and a half hour drive I used to do on a regular basis. Uh, 12 and a half hours each way that I would listen to podcasts Notice that I had missed a couple. Go back and not recognize them at all. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> That's so, bad. So for like hours. And it came down to, to a, 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 a TikTok I saw recently with the, the comedian. I forget her name. She was like, you ever drive another road and realize I'm driving 75 miles an hour? And I don't remember any of it. <laughs> and I've been driving yeah. for hours. <laughs> yep. Yep. When I lived in yeah. Florida and I was driving to Indiana on a pretty regular basis, it was almost exactly a 12 hour drive. And yeah, most of those trips I would remember, I don't know, maybe an hour of it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Can't you got number two? All right. Number two, uh, they're calling the fridge stack. When something clearly doesn't fit in the fridge, so you force the door shut and let it fall out on someone else. <laughs> um, Pet, do you do this? Did, Amos, what do what you... Is this something that you do? This is... So... Uh, I, I, can't, I can't say that it is because I'm OCD about the fucking fridge, so I would never let this happen. <laughs> Um, so yep. no, this one, I can't say this one applies to me. It applies, I think to everywhere, every other person in the house, but not to me. 
Yeah. Not to see, say that I haven't done it by accident, but I don't. I've never done well, it. Well, see, and that's that's exactly not to steal your answer, but that's pretty much exactly what I was gonna say. No, no, you like, say it out loud. This isn't something that that I would like do on purpose. I wouldn't be like, oh, huh, huh. Let me set this person up. But I can't say for sure that in history that I've never done this. So. I appreciate you not lying. <laughs> So, uh, so the peanut gallery is saying she's, that um, she's not saying you told the truth. She's just saying you didn't lie. <laughs> exactly, exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. Um, oh my yeah, gosh. So I, well, yeah. Curtis in the chat says no, because it's always going to be me. It falls out on. Yeah, and that's the that's the risk that you would run by doing this. Is that that if you stacked the fridge, like it's there's. I don't know how many people in your house or how often you go to the fridge, but I would say there's probably a 50, 50 chance it's going to happen to you. Like, right. I don't, I don't know why would somebody would do this on purpose, but uh, you know, whatever. I'm not going to judge if you do this. Cool. <laughs> All right. <sighs> What's number the third one, Amos. Number three, the final brush from at E underscore Stuart little. Okay. Is it a universal thing to brush your teeth an hour before the dentist and try to hide the prior six months of neglect? Ha! Ah! So that's that's funny. Um, so I do brush my teeth. It says an hour before. I do brush my teeth like right before I leave for the dentist. But it's not to try to cover up. Like, oh man, I brush my teeth for the last six months. So let me brush them now. That's not why I brush my teeth so that I don't have chunks of food in my mouth. To, like I, th I feel like that's rude to the to the dentist and the dental tech if you don't brush your teeth before you go. Um, yes. What about you, man? Yes. The only thing is the 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 faux pas I have on this is that I don't floss. Ah. Mm -hmm. But I will scrub the shit out of my teeth before I go to the dentist. Now, it's funny that you say the, the floss thing, because I have in the past, about three days before my dental appointment, I'll start flossing every day. <laughs> because, now I didn't do that this time, uh, because I, I also don't floss regularly. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like I, I used to like try to hide that. Yeah, so I guess if the, if the question was worded more toward flossing than brushing, I would say this definitely applies to me. Because I would like for the couple days prior, I would I would floss the shit out of my teeth <laughs> just before my appointment. Nope. Uh, <laughs> all right, Kent, number four. All right. Uh, this one's called the immediate track. My impatient ass tracking the order I just placed two minutes ago. Um. Okay. So it's a picture of Lisa Simpson still holding under the mouse, staring at the computer. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, two minutes ago is a is a bit of an exaggeration, but I have been known to start tracking my order. Like it'll say, "We'll deliver like seven to ten days," and yeah, like later that day or the next day, I'll be I'll be plugging in the tracking number, trying to figure out where it's at. Has it left? Has it left Atlanta yet? Is it in Phoenix yet? You know that sort of thing. Oh so, my yeah, god! I think this one kind of applies to me. When, when it gets stuck in Louisville, like that's just a bottomless pit of never getting anywhere. Right, right. Um, yeah, I would say. Uh, does this apply to me? Probably. I mean, I have the U USPS alerts app. I have the UPS alerts app. I've got the DHL <laughs> alerts app. I've got the FedEx alerts app. Right. Uh, if there's a pigeon, a carrier pigeon alert app, I would probably have that as well. <laughs> yes. Right. Well, not to mention, like Amazon's actually really good about giving you updates. Right. Uh, through, um, through text or through. I have stuff in my Amazon cart right now that hasn't been ordered, and I'm already ready to track it. So yes, this applies. To <laughs> you haven't actually clicked order yet, but you're ready to to track it. Yep. That's that's fantastic. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So, oh no, you're, you're the odd numbers. Yeah. Uh, what, what do we got next? Um, this one is going to be a little bit jacked up, but it says, uh, lock amnesia five seconds after I, uh, <clears throat> five seconds after locking the door, me, did I lock the door? My brain. Uh, 
five seconds later, did I lock the door? My brain. Uh, yeah, see, I, no. No, like, when I was younger, uh, like, like fresh out of the house or whatever, like, yeah. on my own, like, first coming in the military or whatever, I would check my, my lock, like, you know, I would lock it when I closed it, right? But then I would check it again, like, before bed or whatever, right. just to make sure that... It, you know, maybe once in my life I forgot to lock the door, uh, but no, I was never obsessive like this. Like this is, uh, this is um, OCD type behavior. I think they're describing here. Uh, what about you, man? Are you are you a a real re lock checker? checker? Um, no, because I have a smart lock, so I just ask Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I think that still counts. If if you say, hey. Uh, assistant uh, is the door locked if you do that over and over i think that still counts no just do it once but i can do it from anywhere so yeah i mean, I, I, I i don't know i've also got two apps that'll tell me <laughs> right right like yeah. my phone takes a lot of the thought processes out of my brain that used to hold me down mm. Mm. um yeah all right so let's move on to number six uh, this was called the time double check. Does anyone ever pull their phone out to check the time, but then have to do it again because they've got to actually look at the clock? Or am I just stupid, dude? No, this is totally me. And Steph has her hand up as well. I think everyone fucking does this, and if you don't, you're a fucking liar. I like I mentioned I do this, this all the time. I I pull my phone simply to check the time. I look at my phone, throw it back in my pocket, and I have no fucking clue what time it is. I mentioned this to my wife earlier and she almost spit out her drink. <laughs> and then I reminded her that she has a watch on her wrist. <laughs> it's an Apple watch tied to the phone. It has the same time on it. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah. I think this is kind of everyone. And I think that, yeah, that's, that's kind of, the yeah, point, right? this one, yeah, this one, I think, I think this is the first universal one uh, going with the conceit of this article um this i think this is the first one that actually applies to literally every human yeah well at least ones with <laughs> phones uh number seven the hidden hill breathing y'all ever try to breathe quieter while walking up hills so bystanders don't hear you fighting for your life <laughs> <laughs> yes i've done that i used to do this when when we would have pt tests in the air force like i'll be trucking around the around the track right uh, like gasping for for life but as i would pass somebody or more likely somebody was passing me Hold i would together. try to regulate my breath <laughs> so that it didn't sound I, like i was dying i do this on my stairs every day just like curtis said in, in the chat like every day i live on a, in a three-story house every time i leave the basement and go up to the bedrooms which are on the top floor i am completely wiped of breath and holy shit do i sit there and try to maintain and usually I just lay down and just kind of <laughs> wait. Oh, my God. That's, yeah. wow. <laughs> all right, number eight. Yeah, all right, number eight. Uh, this is called the immediate ignore. One of my biggest faults is that when I ask someone their name, I forget to listen to what their name is. I really need to work on this. Amos, is this you? <laughs> Whose name is? <laughs> like I am so bad with names. I... Okay, so I am really bad with names. So what I learned, I learned a trick a long time ago, was that if I meet somebody new, I'm going to say their name at least three times in my first conversation with them, so that it sticks with me. So if I was meeting you, Amos, for the first time. I'm saying, like, oh, um, hi, Amos. My name is Kent. And then the next thing, you know, you'll be like, oh, hey, where are you from? Like, well, uh, Amos, I'm from Indiana. Where are you from? You know, like, I'll do that at least three times. And that will get that. That yeah, has been pretty I, successful so far to, like, get their name associated with the face. That's not, I, I, I think this is closer to, to me than than anything you had. Because I will be like. Hey, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Amos. And you'll be like, I'm Kent. And I'll be like, hey, cool. Uh, I've already forgotten your name. 
Right, right. Like, yeah. as soon as you got done saying your name, my brain dumped that shit. Yep. And unless yep. you find some way of being really remarkable to me other than that, something you're wearing, an accent you have, some joke that you said, something like that, there's got to be something associated with you for me to remember your name because otherwise you're just not, it's not going to register. I'm not going to say that you're <laughs> not important, but it's not going to register as an individual identity in my brain. You'll just mm-hmm. be that person at that thing right right yep and that's yeah no i suffer from the same thing and if i don't do that that little exercise like i almost guaranteed to forget your name that's that's yeah. awful all right the quadruple overpack does anyone else pack underwear for a trip like they're planning on shitting themselves twice for every day that they're gone <laughs> <laughs> oh god yes i okay so i used to do that i used to do that. i do i <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh my god! My my thing so, is this: I, I'm packing jeans, I'm packing t-shirts, probably a sweatshirt, maybe a jacket, maybe an extra pair of shoes, depending on how fancy the places I'm going to. You got socks. I got all this other equipment I'm taking. Like I'm always packing. If I go on a simple weekend trip to Anchorage, which is 40 miles away, and I'm staying at a, at a hotel with my wife over a drill weekend or something like that, just a little couples getaway for a night. I'm packing 200 pounds worth of shit. I'm not stressed. <laughs> about packing an extra 43 pairs of underwear. Like, they're light. They're super light. Just shove them in there. I use underwear to pack stuff, like clean underwear, not dirty ones, but clean underwear. I'll use it to pack (laughs) electronics, like, to cushion, uh, like, as packing material. Like, I don't give a shit. Give me all the underwear, man. I I learned a long time ago, because I I travel all, well, not so much these days, but I, I, I used to travel all the freaking time. I would pack as light as I possibly could. I stopped taking toiletries for the most part. I mean, it depends on where I'm going and for what reason. But I I stopped packing toiletries for a long time because is there literally any place that I'm going to go to that doesn't have a Walmart within fucking four blocks or at least a fucking 7-Eleven or a Walgreens within a block where I can just go grab that stuff, right? And if if I did shit myself twice a day, like, well, guess what? I'm going to the store to pick up a pack of drawers. Like, nope. that contingency were to happen, uh, there's a store nearby. Now, if I was going to some, like, Antarctic outpost or some shit, you bet your ass. If I was going for two weeks, I'd be packing for a month or a month and a half because I, I know that there's no Walmarts or Walgreens. There. You you pack for mobility. I pack yes. for stability. Like if if we're on a plane and it goes down and we both survive, you're gonna be hunting around for fucking lime deposits to wash your pits. I'm gonna <laughs> have three weeks of soap. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, no. I, uh, I, again, I guess it really would depend on the destination. But well, uh, and, and again, no, I, I, we, we I, have I different. Pack as long as I possibly can. Like your your thing is, I wanna I wanna get there. I wanna get unpacked and be available to do whatever like immediately not have to worry about what's going to happen where or anything else. My thing is I want to be able to arrive, get to a hotel and then did not move for three days. If that's what I want to fucking do. It never, yeah, well, it never I'm is always good for three days. Like I've got three days worth of clothes for sure. Even if I'm going for a day, I've got three days worth. Right. But, but once you get to a week, like, no, I've got a week's worth and that's it. Curtis Kurt, Kurt said one of us is going to be good at bathing in the wild three weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um yeah that's uh oof. is this is this is this moose piss yeah yeah save that we'll use that later <laughs> yeah that smells better than i do right yes. now so let's use that <laughs> all right uh, the shower yeah. dilemma all right uh me in the shower trying to remember if i used shampoo and it's uh, uh it's Keanu Reeves uh, Neo in the Matrix. Um, this one I don't uh, I don't relate to this man. I'm I'm very regimented in the shower. Mm-hmm. Like I do this and then 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 I turn off the water and I get out. Armpits, asshole, crotch, and teeth. Teeth? Yeah, those are the only four things you got to clean in the bathroom. Armpits, asshole, crotch, and teeth. Oh, I thought you were talking about showers specifically. I was like, no. you brush your teeth in the shower? No, as it's an old George Carlin thing. He said you could save time if you only wash those four parts in that order with the same brush. <laughs> in the 
the same order? <laughs> With the same brush. <laughs> Jesus. No. Um, no. So I, I definitely do not relate to to this one. I, um, I definitely know if I've shampooed or not. Yeah. Eight minutes. If I'm still in the shower after eight minutes, send in a fucking rescue team. My uh, my current yeah my current routine is the first thing I do when I get in. Well, first thing I do is is rinse off everything. Right. Uh, and then I shampoo my hair. Yep. And then immediately after rinsing that shampoo, I put conditioner on my hair. And then I wash everything else. And then I rinse that. What order do you wash your body in? Um, it's top to bottom. So, like I said, I start with the shampooing the hair, mm-hmm. and then his face, neck, and then you know. All the way down, Arms, toes, and like yeah. the toes are the last thing that I okay, yeah, same here. That I wash, yeah, yeah. I I knew uh, I knew some dudes that were like, uh, uh, so you wash top to bottom, but then you come back up to wash your balls, right? And I'm like, no, that that gets washed when the middle gets washed. And they were like, well, then you're washing your legs and your feet with your ball water, and I'm like, no, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm providing a buffer between the washing my balls this time and washing my face next time. <laughs> yeah, like that person doesn't understand how showers work. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, like, like Chandler said, it's soap. It's self cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Wow. So yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't. Uh, if, if I can't remember if I shampooed or not, there are bigger issues going on. <laughs> Right, that's yeah. like the the driving down the highway and not remembering driving. Yeah, <laughs> like that's even worse than that. Like right. that's Jesus. Um, the sacrificial right. sleep. Me finally gets eight hours of sleep. My neck. Yeah, but you did it wrong. <laughs> I I don't really have this problem. I I can sleep anywhere in any position, and I'm probably fine the next day. And I hate you for it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um I I don't under I like I don't relate with this either because when the fuck have I ever gotten eight hours of sleep? <laughs> right. Like in my life. I don't unless I was hungover and that's not sleep, that's recovery. Yeah, uh, eight hours of sleep though, like that's a weekend thing for me. Like I I don't ever see eight hours of sleep during the week. I don't like, see it on the weekends. Like my I I might get six hours on the weekends if I sleep in. Wow. Yeah, and you wonder why this show is always fucking released late. <laughs> uh, All right, man. number 12. We got, we got 23 of these. We got to start flying through, man. All right, the security anxiety. You know that feeling of anxiety as you're about to walk past the security sensors on your way out of a store and you think, oh, my God, did I shove a TV up my ass and I can't remember? <laughs> I okay. I have every had time. that anxiety before. Every time, every time I go to leave a store, and especially as my wife said, if the littles are with us, if the little kids are with us, you're like you're wondering about their pockets. Like what what security tag tag did they just randomly pick up that someone else stripped yep. off some clothes, shove in their pocket because they thought it was cool, and now it's gonna blow up and be pink all over the shirt, and the alarm's gonna go off, and I'm gonna go to jail for trying to steal a fucking security tag in my little girl's pocket, like. Yeah, well, I, can, I can relate directly to this very recently. So just yesterday or the day before, I went to Walmart for one item. I got that one item, checked out, was going out the door, and I heard the beep, 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 beep thing. Boom. And I, like, got all guilty, was, like, uh, looking for the guard, and, like, holding up my receipt. Like, yeah. uh, and then the guy finally comes around, and he's like, no, 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 that wasn't for you. I was like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> It's like uh, <laughs> that's when you're like so, so it's, it's it's not for the video game in my pants. Yeah, <laughs> cool. I got away with it again. No. Um, uh-huh. how about the song squeeze? Me trying to okay. squeeze a five minute song in before I arrive at my destination that's two minutes away. Uh, no, that's me with podcasts. Yep. I try to t- I try to tie my podcasts based on how long my 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 journey, my, my commute is going to be, yep. uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and it's not a squeeze as much of a stretch. Like it's got, I, I, it's only a minute and a half to get to the mailboxes from my house, but that, that could be a seven minute trip if the podcast is really good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Next up, we got music paranoia checking to see if those weird sounds are part of the music or not. <laughs> 
Yes. Yep. Especially on airplanes. Oh my God. How many times do I take my noise canceling headphones off on an airplane? Cause I feel like someone's trying to talk to me. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've been listening to a song and I've turned the radio down to see if the, you know, was that, was that siren sound in the song or. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you, and all I can think of is mouth smacking the TV while the drain gets the water goes up the drain in Goonies. Uh, anyway, <laughs> some of you will catch that. <sighs> the Google of shame. When you Google the lyrics of a song and realize you've been singing nonsense for six months. Uh, yeah. No, that doesn't happen to me that much these days. Um, because you don't remember Google... the, you don't remember the words of the songs anyway. <laughs> Well, no, but the thing is, like, so there was plenty of songs, like, I grew up saying the lyrics wrong, but ever since we got the internet and could look up song lyrics, and then, yeah, I realized, not singing nonsense for six months, I've been singing nonsense for 16 years. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I still don't understand what revved up like a deuce means. I think it's, you know... Well, I always heard it as wrapped up like a douche. But that makes more sense than revved up like a deuce. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Who else did this when submitting <laughs> classwork in school? Um, and it, it shows a, a person putting their assignment. They lift up the stack of already turned in homework and sliding theirs into the middle of the stack. Uh, I know you and I both did this because we once fought over who got to put our paper under the other person's paper. So. Did we? I don't remember doing that, but I believe it's true. <laughs> Cordy's class. Um, that's probably true. Yep. I believe you with my heart, but I do not remember <laughs> it with my brain. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's that's definitely both of us right there. Yeah. All right. What's next? Uh, this is a picture of a man or a person anyway floating off a of bed with just their feet touching. It looks like a ghostly picture, and it says, Me at 3 a.m. trying to plug in my charger without getting out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely done this. I have absolutely done this. My the current position of my bed to the to the charger receptacle or whatever, I don't have this issue. But in hotels, almost every time I've got this issue. I this is so bad that the first thing my wife and I do when we go into a hotel is find all the like identify every plug. We only need two. Don't care. I want to know where all the plugs are. Give me all the plugs. <laughs> Because <laughs> I gotta plan some shit out. She's got a work laptop, a personal laptop. I got a, I got yep. a laptop. I got an iPad Pro. I got a phone. She's got a phone. We both got watches, plus some other random shit. And our backup battery is over here. Like I need all the plugs available to me right now. Marriott might as well just have a big, like a little, a, a thing that comes out the top and just blinks. Here's a fucking plug. Like, <laughs> yes. <clears throat> because this right here has happened to me far too many times. All right. Next up, we've got the super stupid question. Y'all ever have to Google a question so dumb that you got to go into incognito mode? <laughs> Amos? Um, there are times when I've had to look things up and that were inappropriate for random things. Like, I stream my computer on the internet, so there are times when I go into incognito mode to look up things that I'm not sure about, especially if I'm looking up something on, on Urban Dictionary. But yes, as far as yes. it just being so dumb, no, that that's not dumb to me. That's content. <laughs> no, but I, yeah, I, I pretty much the same reasons. If if something's a little suspect, like I will definitely go into to incognito mode, or if it's something that I just don't want in my in my algorithms, right? Because everything's everything is an algorithm now. Yep. YouTube or Google or fucking whatever, and I don't want that. Like I want to see what this thing is, but I don't want that to be in my search history so right. yeah i will definitely do this <clears throat> all right um the headphone pull when you've got <laughs> it's a picture of a car it's still attached to the to the gas pump as it's trying to pull away when you've got <laughs> when you've got earphones in but forget and walk away from your laptop uh i can relate i i do that almost every thursday <laughs> <laughs> thursday. but that's why i've got this super long extension cord now so hopefully I remember that shit before. <laughs> yeah, ho ho hopefully you trip over the cord before you pull your laptop off the off the thing. <laughs> exactly. You're not trying to give yourself slack. You're trying to find another way to to alert you. 
<laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right. The synchronized right. breathing. Uh, yeah. You ever lay next to someone and try to breathe like them and almost die? Oh my god. <laughs> my uh, my wife is a very shallow, very quick breather, like all the time, especially when she's sleeping. And if I try to do that, I will literally hyperventilate. Yes. Yes. I've definitely done this. Uh, whether I'm, I'm sitting next to somebody or I'm laying next to someone in bed or, or whatever the case is, like I've, I don't do this anymore for this very reason. Uh, but, right. uh, yeah, I've often tried to like match, match the breathing. It's either too fast or too slow or too something. Yep. And like, I either start to hyperventilate or start to like, like, like gasping for breath because I can't breathe something like yep. it's never right. Yeah. The great risk me risking my job, career and future to get that extra 15 minutes of sleep. <laughs> oh, this is me to the T. Like I will, I will, I will snooze for 15 seconds. If I can get that 15 seconds, you will, <laughs> you will. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's uh yeah. It is you, one ever of my want, you ever want to see Kent get really pissed off? Wake him up an hour before you have to be somewhere when it only takes him five minutes to get ready, and he set the alarm for an hour prior. That's one of the keys. <laughs> because if, if he didn't set the alarm, he just gets mad at you. But if he set the alarm himself and then you continually try to wake him up and he only needs five minutes. But but you keep waking him up well ahead of that. He gets pissed off at you and himself, and it's <laughs> fucking hilarious. It's frustrating as shit because you got. You know, I mean, I'm trying to get some breakfast, but it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, it's it's fucking awful. Ask, all right, ask Steph. Her and I had a good laugh uh, at your expense last time we were all in South by together. I have no doubt. I've had, yeah yeah. That's probably a, a quite quite the sizable club of people. We were there for seven days, and I think we 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 did it twice. So. Mm. All right. No, uh, All right. Next up, we got the shower envy. Mm. I should get in the shower. Two hours later, someone else starts the shower. Oh my God. Fuck you. I was just about to get in there. This is the story of my family right here. Yeah. And now we have unlimited hot water, and it's like so much easier. Nobody has to worry about it anymore. It's so great. Yeah. I. I feel like this is something I could relate to, but I cannot come up with any anecdotes of this happening. But I think probably when I was younger, this was probably a thing for me. Uh, how about karaoke? You're going to do a song. Two hours later, someone else does the song. You're like, fuck you. I was just going to do that song. <laughs> that's yeah. That's probably relatable as well. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> or that last beer in the fridge. Yeah, um, yeah, it's been there for three weeks, but damn it, I was about to drink that. Yep. <laughs> That's how it is right here with snacks. Like I was just getting just about to eat those cookies. Like they've 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 been in there for three weeks. They expired a week ago. Like, what do you <laughs> no, I know they're crumbling in my mouth as I eat them. Um, all right, the old towel excuses. Last one here. Sorry, I'm late. I was sat on my bed with a towel for 45 minutes, staring at a wall. Uh. No, I know. I don't. I do not relate to this at all. I, I get out of the shower. I dry off. I get dressed like it's it's immediate. I do not sit in a towel. I yeah. I don't. This one. No. No, no. But, yeah. but then I'm also I also shower at night before I go to bed. So like for me, waking up is just literally rolling out of bed, throwing pants and a shirt on and calling it time to go. I mean, right, I'll, right, br I'll yeah. brush my teeth if the people we're meeting are important, you know? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, then, yeah I, I just told you I don't get out eight hours of sleep. I just brushed my teeth like four hours ago. Do I really need to brush them right now? Yeah, right. I probably do. Yeah, yeah. But anyway. No, and and I I get this one, uh, but I, it's just, that's just not, I, I don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, okay. Yeah, Curtis, Curtis in the chat says, I, "I will fucking refuse to get dressed. I will take a fucking nap." <laughs> um, yeah, I no, I, I totally, I totally get this one. It's just it does not reflect my own personal behavior. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. All right. Well, that was fun. That was, that was fun. fun. I'm sorry, Deuce. Yeah. Uh, Deuce going wild. Had to miss the last half of that. I'm sure I'll catch it later. Yeah, he he will. He he's one of those guys. He he always goes back and checks the vod. <laughs> uh, 
Um, no, right on. Um, yeah. So, uh, Amos, wh- where can people follow you on on the the, the socials? The the social meds. The social meds. Yeah, the it's just like meads. the social meds. Where are you at on the social meds, bruh? <laughs> I was getting till you said bruh. <laughs> Shout out to my Hawaiian friends, uh, my Hawaiian, my Hawaiian friends. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E, and you can find the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery, R I T U A L M I S E R Y. Kent, how about you? Yeah, like we said earlier in the show, R M underscore Del Noche on Twitter. I'm Del Noche or Del Noche seventy seven, literally everywhere else on the internet. On the old interwebs, um, you can uh, you can join our conversation on our Discord. Go to bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Um, Hell yeah. And you need to join that because we do a post show, a live chat post show with our viewers every week. Yeah. yeah whether you like the show or not, we're going to do it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so ch- check out ritualmisery.com for links to all of our social media and all of our everything, like everything that Ritual Misery does. It's over there. Yeah, uh, we're live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific, although we do a pre-show now with the uh, Have a Drink folks, uh, drinking some drinks, drink, drink, drinks. Yep, so seven or 6.30 p.m. Pacific if you want to join the cocktail hours. Yeah, there you go. Uh, thank you, Jackie, for the idea, and uh, thank you, Have a Drink, for jumping in on it. And uh, all that being said, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod, because by golly, he's fucking awesome. Uh, Kevin Cloud does the music for the show, if you didn't know, and he's kicking ass and making also, things on the internet. So, 98% of the soundtrack of the entire internet. Literally. <laughs> All right. yes. Thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Alright, watch your ears, it's gonna be loud. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. It wasn't that loud for me. Well, uh, right. It was it, whatever. <sighs>